Hi friends, once again good evening and welcome to my channel Mokambika Nursing. Friends, here we are discussing questions for ESIC Nursing Officer Exam Preparation. Also, these questions will helpful for your coming RRB and other Nursing Officer Exam. Today's questions are from Endocrine System. And we can see the question. First question, which electrolyte imbalance causes tetany? Options. Option A, hyponatremia. Option B, hypocalcemia. Option C, hypomagnesemia. Option D, hypokalemia. Our question, tetany occurs due to which electrolyte imbalance? It is calcium. Hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia causes tetany. One of the neuromuscular changes occurs in hypocalcemia is tetany and also other neuromuscular changes include stitching of the hands and fingers then cramps then painful muscles spasm of the heart and foot muscles and also the paresthesia followed by numbness then positive trousers and chostic sign or the sign of hypocalcemia or tetany and important one point, normal serum calcium level is 8.6 to 10 mg per deciliter. Hypocalcemia means below 8.6 that indicate hypocalcemia. Hypercalcemia means above 10 that indicate hypercalcemia. And the next question, positive chaustic sign is an indication of option. Option A, hyperkalemia. Option B, hypernatremia. Option C, hypokalemia. Option D, hypocalcemia. Chaustic sign and trouser sign are the positive tests for hypocalcemia. Here answer is option D, hypocalcemia. Positive chaustic sign means if we are lightly tapping over the facial nerve in front of the ear, there may be contraction of the facial muscles that indicate positive Chaustic sign. It is one of the positive sign of hypocalcemia. Move on to the next question. The bone remodeling hormone is options. Option A, parathormone. Option B, thyroxine. Option C, calcitonin. Option D, vitamin D. Which hormone is also known as bone remodeling hormone? It is calcitonin. Option C is the correct answer. Bone remodeling means the bones are reabsorbed and new bones are formed at the same site. That is known as bone remodeling and which is helped help by calcitonin. Option C. Move on to the next question. Moon face with centrally obesity is seen in options. Option A. Addison's disease. Option B. Cushing syndrome. Option C. Down syndrome. Option D. Turner syndrome. Moon face with central obesity is seen in Cushing syndrome. Option B is the correct answer. Cushing syndrome is one of the metabolic disorder which is characterized by hyper secretion of glucocorticoids from adrenal cortex especially cortisol the main clinical features with cushing syndrome patient with cushing syndrome include triangle obesity moon face buffalo hump thinner arms and legs and abdominal stray okay here Strangle obesity or central obesity is there. Moon phase is there. So that is the clinical features of Cushing syndrome. On to the next question. Which level will increase in hypothyroidism? Among this, which level will increase in hypothyroidism? Options. Option A, T3. Option B, T4. Option C, TSH. Option D, all of this. And the correct answer is, it is TSH. TSH will increase in case of hypothyroidism because the T3 and T4 level will be decreased in case of hypothyroidism. So, the plasma level of TSH will increase as a negative feedback mechanism. Okay, here correct answer is option C. And the next question, cretinism occurs as a result of options. Option A, thyroxine. Option B, estrogen. Option C, renin. Option D, all of this. Cretinism, here the question is, cretinism occurs due to the deficiency of thyroxines in infants and children's cause cretinism. 
okay so the answer will come option a thyroxin and the deficiency of this thyroxin in children and infants and the deficiency of this thyroxin in adult cause mixed edema and the excessive production of thyroxin in adult cause graves disease that is also important point excessive thyroxin in adult Move on to the next question. During the physical examination of the patient for endocrine system, diminished axillary and pubic hair may indicate the problem of options. Option A, hyperthyroidism. Option B, hypothyroidism. Option C, hypoparathyroidism. Option D, hyperparathyroidism. During the physical examination, especially focusing on endocrine system, the patient may have diminished axillary and pubic hair that indicate patient is having hypothyroidism. Option B is the correct answer. In case of hypothyroidism, the patient may have diminished axillary and pubic hair. Move on to the next question. A nurse is caring for a client after hypophysectomy. The nurse notices clear nasal drainage from the client nostrils. The initial nursing action would be options. Option A. Lower the head of the bed. Option B. Test the drainage for glucose. Option C. Obtain a culture for drainage. Option D. Continue to observe the drainage. Here the question is. A nurse is caring for a client after hypophysectomy. Hypophysectomy means removal of the pituitary gland. And the nurse notices that there is a clear nasal drainage from the client nostrils. So a clear discharge is coming from the client nostrils. And what is the initial nursing action here? If the clear discharge is coming from the nostrils means it indicates there is a cerebrospinal fluid leak. If this occurs, the drainage should be collected and test for the presence of cerebrospinal fluid. So, here the answer will come test the drainage for glucose. In the first option, lower the head end of the bed. We should not lower the head end of the bed. Okay. And third option, obtain a culture for drainage. Here, uh, the discharge is clear. So, there is, there is no need to obtain culture. And last option, continue to observe the drainage. If we are continuously observing the drainage without any action, that may increase serious complications. So, here the apt option or correct option is test the drainage for glucose. Option B. Move on to the next question. After several diagnostic tests, a client is diagnosed with diabetes insipidus. The nurse performs an assessment on the client, knowing that which symptom is most indicative of this disorder. Options. Option A. Fatigue. Option B. Diarrhea. Option C. Polydipsia. Option D. Weight gain. Diabetes insipidus is characterized by hyposecretion of the antidiuretic hormones. And also the kidney tubules fail to reabsorb water. So the main symptoms, classical symptoms of this diabetes insipidus is polydipsia and polyuria, excessive thirst and excessive urination. So here the correct answer will come polydipsia option C. And also other symptoms include anorexia, weight loss, then specific gravity of urine will be decreased and the urine become pale in color. This all some signs and symptoms occurs in case of diabetes insipidus. And the first option, fatigue can occur as a result of this excessive urination and, and diarrhea and weight gain is not related to diabetes insipidus. And the next question. A nurse provides instruction to a client who is taking levothyroxine. The nurse tells the client to take the medication. Option A, with food. Option B, at lunch time. Option C, on an empty stomach. Option D, at bedtime with a snack. The question is, nurse is giving instruction to a client taking levothyroxine. Levothyroxine is an example of thyroid hormone. Okay, it should be taken at on MD stomach. Okay. The medication should be taken an MD stomach in early morning before breakfast. 
why we are taking it on empty stomach means it enhances the absorption okay move on to the next question most common oral infection seen in diabetes mellitus options option a candida option b staphylococcus option c streptococcus option d pneumococcal infection which one is the most common infection seen in diabetes mellitus patient it is candida infection option a is the correct answer and the next question niacin is contraindicated in diabetes patient because option a it increases insulin resistance option b it increases metabolism of anti diabetic drugs option c it causes hypoglycemia option d all of this is in diabetes patient they are not taking niacin its reason is it increases the insulin resistance option a is the correct answer and the next question oral anti diabetic drugs safe in renal failure is options option a metformin option b gliburide option c repaglinide option d all of this which oral anti diabetic drug is safe in case of renal failure it is repaglinide option c is the correct answer because this drug is excreted through the bile not through kidney move on to the next question world diabetes day is celebrated on options option a 14th august option b 14th september option c 14th october option d 14th november world diabetes day is celebrated on 14th november option d is the correct answer move on to the next question what is the renal threshold value of glucose options option a 188 mg per deciliter option b 185 mg per deciliter option c 183 mg per deciliter and option d 180 mg per deciliter question renal threshold value of glucose it is 180 mg per deciliter option d is the correct answer here we discuss some of the questions from endocrine system very few questions we discussed surely these questions will helpful for your studies if it is useful for your studies please share my videos to your friend circle